What's up my fellow hunters? Today I have an interesting build for you guys. It's a longsword build made for the hunter that wants to CC monsters and spend less time sharpening. This build is called the Masterful Punishing Paralyzer. It's a longsword build that relies heavily on two forms of CC, paralysis from the weapon and stun, utilizing the bury off set bonus which works amazingly with the new IA slash in the longsword's kit. Alright then, so here's what we've got going for this build. The weapon is going to be the Crimson Viper Fang 2. This is the longsword from the Viper Toby Kadachi tree. The head, arms, and waist all come from Teostra's beta armor, with the chest and the leg from Barrios beta armor. The charm we're slotting in is the Handicraft Charm 4. Aside from the charm, everything else is very easily attainable before even getting to the Guiding Lands, a plus for many of the PC hunters who are just getting into the endgame. Now onto the decorations. We're going to be slotting in a Vitality and an Expert Jewel into the weapon, a Draw Vitality Jewel goes into the head, an Expert Level 4 Jewel with an Expert Level 1 Jewel goes into the chest, a Draw Vitality Jewel and a Brace Jewel goes into the arms, a sheath handicraft jewel, a tenderizer jewel, and an expert jewel goes into the waist. A tenderizer protection jewel, or honestly any tenderizer level 4 jewel, along with a sheath jewel goes into the legs. When all is said and done, we get critical eye maxed out at 7, handicraft maxed out at 5 giving us that sweet purple sharpness, health boost maxed out at 3, weakness exploit maxed out, Quick Sheath maxed out, Critical Draw at 2, Last Attack 2, which is basically a throwaway skill, Heat Guard, Power Prolonger 1, Latent Power 1, Constitution 1, and Divine Blessing 1, with most of these one point skills as throwaways or just thrown into the armor. So, how is this build going to work? Along with the skills, we need to take into account the two set bonuses Master's Touch and Punishing Draw. This is afforded to us thanks to three pieces of Tailstra armor and two pieces of Barioth armor. On top of the high CC potential from the weapon, you my friend will be a stunner, and here's how. So the main gimmick here involves the following skills. Punishing draw, critical draw, quick sheath, and the new special sheath attacks. When your hunter enters a special sheath, the following IA attack is considered a draw attack. With two points in critical draw and the base affinity, we are always going to hit 100% affinity on these draw attacks, no matter where we hit the monster. But, if we go for the head, and even if it's a monster that doesn't have the head as a weak spot, like Baroth or the Gold Rapian, you will always crit on the monster's head no matter what. And that's during these draw attacks. This comes into play with punishing draw, since punishing draw adds a stun effect to draw attacks as well as slightly increases the attack power. This helps bridge the gap on a longsword that isn't as beefy as some of the other options in the game, or for instance, the Saki Jiva longsword you can customize. Furthermore, Quick Sheath helps this build flow like a raging river. With the Quick Sheath animation, it's noticeably faster, allowing you to pull off that IA slash quickly and efficiently. What the Viper Tobikidachi longsword has above the other options in the game is a higher base paralysis stat. It's got a good amount of purple sharpness and decent damage, and while the Acidic Glavinous weapon and the Safi Jiva weapon does out with more damage, the Crimson Viper Fang 2 doesn't require the free element like the Acidic Glavinous, nor does it force you into using a lower paralysis stat like the Safi Jiva weapons. The only way I think I can make this build more powerful if there was a Master Rank Kuft Roth version of this weapon which comes complete with critical status or something like that. I did put together a build utilizing a Safi Jiva Longsword, and while I did upgrade the status buildup, I still locked the monster in place more often with this build than I did with the Safi Jiva Longsword. And of course, like every meta build, we have high affinity, weakness exploit, giving us 100% affinity whenever you target a softened weak spot, 85% on non-softened weak spots. This works hand in hand with Master's Touch to ensure that critical hits never lose sharpness. Max Handicraft ensures that we get a healthy amount of purple sharpness, and while everything else in this build is just a nice added perk, skills like Latent Power and Power Prolonger won't make too much of a difference here, but it's nice to have. And as per usual, I love running Health Boost 3. Sure does help out when going head-to-head -head against some of these Master Rank monsters, which can 
basically one shot you. Now before I get into adjustments, I want to talk about augments. While usually I give you the choice of what augments to run, I suggest for this build to get at least level 1 in attack, 2 if you can upgrade the slots for it. Also, you'll notice that in this video the weapon doesn't look like the Crimson Viper Fang 2. That's because I fully augmented it with the custom augments, following the trend of mostly bolstering attack or status, since the base 15% affinity was already very good. This weapon ended with a Nurkigante plus a custom augment, giving it a pretty cool look if I do say so myself. Alright. So let's get into the adjustments. If you want more attack power, you can swap out the draw vitality decos for critical vitality decos. This still gives you the added health boost while pumping up the critical damage. If you want to go all the way, you can swap the brace jewel for a critical jewel. If you want to use a Safi longsword instead and you have one of the paralysis longswords, it doesn't take too much effort to adjust it for this build. As long as you upgrade the longsword with two affinity increase fives, and the sharpness increase 6 and whatever else you want to put in, preferably I prefer attack or status, you can easily maintain the same skills by replacing the expert deco on the chest with a vitality deco, as well as slotting a paralyzer level 4 deco into the weapon. The Crimson Viper Fang still out paralyzes using a Safi Jiva one, but this build will out damage the former. Now, if you're on PC and you haven't hit the Guiding Lance yet, some slight adjustments can be made to the base build. Basically, build it exactly the same way, but swap the Brace Jewel for a Handicraft Jewel. Honestly, I mostly use this build in multiplayer, so I never don't have the Brace Jewel in it. But if you can put up with the occasional trip, go for the Max Handicraft. Furthermore, if you can play cleanly and you can get by with Handicraft 4, then you can still run the Brace Jewel and it wouldn't be a problem. Thank you once again for tuning in. I appreciate your support and I hope you found this build useful. Remember guys, my builds are not meant to replace the meta, but are fun and interesting ways to play with the skills in the game. So sure, it's not the most meta build, but I do extensively test these builds out. So you can find me on Twitch, the link is in the description below. I stream Monster Hunter mostly, and I'm live Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. As always, a like would be hella appreciated, a subscribe would be equally appreciated, and if you want to stay in the know, hit that bell icon to be notified when I go live. As always, Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you next time, you stay frosty hunters, and get lifted. Bye guys.